Hey guys, Dr. Justin Feldman here from Feldman Physical Therapy and Performance, and I wanted to take some time to update everybody on our COVID-19 safety protocols, what we're doing here in the clinic, uh, as well as before we get into the clinic to keep our patients safe, uh, obviously keep ourselves safe, and also our families and everybody else we might interact with. I think that um, we have some pretty unique things that we're doing, but they're pretty easy. Um, and really my goal here is to try and spread this knowledge out to as many people as possible so that other people could implement this um, in their businesses, homes, however it might be useful to them. Um, so really the first thing that we are doing is that all of our spaces, um, obviously, you know, nice open air, um, but we have all the HVAC systems set up so that we're just pumping in um, outside air into the space consistently. And then we're gonna come for a little tour here and we'll bring you around in. And so as we come into treatment room, when we get into some of the more confined spaces, what we've done is we have uh, carbon dioxide monitors in the space here. And so you can see this one's reading 573 parts per million. And basically, if we look at um, the carbon dioxide level in the air, that's a pretty good way of you knowing how much air that has been expelled by somebody else or yourself is accumulating in the space where you're hanging out and spending time. And so one of the you know, problems, the masks are really, really good, but if you're spending a prolonged period of time in a space, you really want to ensure that you're breathing fresh air and it's not air that somebody else has expelled. Basically, what people way smarter than us have figured out is that if uh, this level starts to get to around 800 parts per million, about 1% of the air that you breathe will be air that has already been used by somebody else. Could be you, but it's, it's somebody else in the space. And so um, generally the guidelines, and this sort of like flows all over the place for um, commercial and you know home HVAC systems is that you want to make sure that number stays under a thousand you start to get over a thousand and people start to not feel good you get headaches other things start to happen um, but really you know outside air natural air is somewhere between 400 to 500 parts per million usually depending on how close you are to roads and and other things that emit carbon dioxide and so um, we've sort of set our standard at 700 and so Ideally, we're just really trying to ensure that if something were to, um, someone were to not be well or something was to be going on, you're not rebreathing or we're not rebreathing that air, um, ensuring that you know, we're keeping ourselves as safe as possible and making sure we're not breathing in you know, any of potentially dangerous stuff as we're doing it. The other thing that we're doing is that um, all of the therapists have uh, Garmin watches that we're using and the way the Garmin watches work is they're constantly measuring all sorts of physiological things from our body and so they're measuring our heart rate our resting excuse me our resting heart rate they're measuring our activity level throughout the day how well we sleep and they measure the variability in the time between our heartbeats which is a really good indicator of how much stress our body might be under and every morning we wake up we have a dashboard that we look at and when we look at that dashboard which i'll sort of show you guys in a second here that shows us how we're doing compared to our norm and it helps us make sure that we are safe and in and healthy and this stuff has been shown to give somewhere between a 24 and a 48 hour warning before you might feel symptoms that your body is under increased stress. So if we start to see that heart rate variability come down out of our normal range, we see our resting heart rate increase, maybe see some activity level decrease, but the overall stress on our body as reported by the device goes up, we would think if our activity level decreased, our overall stress should decrease. If we see that inverse relationship, then that starts to make us worried and that's when we would run a little bit of a self check on ourselves, and probably not come into work. Um, and this is something that we are excited to be able to offer to the general community is this service of being able to monitor individuals or employees 
we could bring this into your business or just one individual person and be able to help you guys ensure that you are healthy and safe before you go out and interact with the world. So we're gonna look here at an example of some data. This is somebody who is pre-symptomatic, so they don't feel sick yet, but they did start to develop symptoms later on in the day. And this is looking at their data from the day prior. And so we see that they woke up in the morning in this lower quadrant over here, recovery score was a little bit low. And then if we look at the stress on their system throughout that whole day, we can see it's about a little less than 50% higher than what the normal is for their body and their normal day. But then if we look over here, we can see where their sleep was a little bit less, but also we can see that their movement decreased by about 50% from their normal. So if we look at that and we think that the stress on their body increased by about 50%, but their movement decreased by about 50%, that starts to make me a little bit worried that someone might be getting sick. If we then look and we see that the resting heart rate went up by almost 10%, and we do see a small drop in pulse ox or blood oxygen level, these are all signs of somebody who is just about to be sick and will probably start feeling symptoms pretty quickly, but we're able to catch it before they actually do. And this is what the next day's data looks like. And so this is basically when they started to feel symptoms. We can see that they woke up with a even lower recovery score, okay? Um, but you can see the stress change on their system has actually leveled out a little bit. So basically they stopped, started to not feel so great the evening before, pretty much laid low, rested, started to listen to their body. Um, we can also see that the resting heart rate has slightly come down a little bit. And so we're starting to see somebody who now is feeling ill. So they're feeling the symptoms and they're starting to listen to their body. Uh, but the really important thing is that from the screen prior, we were able to see that this person wasn't doing well before they necessarily felt symptoms and prevent them from going out into the world and possibly spreading whatever was making them not feel great uh, to other people. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully everybody found this interesting, uh, intuitive, um, and helpful. I am going to put link down in the comment section and the description of this video to a blog post that explains all of this as well as has links to the relevant research uh, and my email address so that you could reach out to me. Really my goal with all of this is to be a resource for everybody. Uh, we want everyone to be able to keep their businesses open, help as many people as possible, uh, and also keep everybody safe and healthy. So if there are any questions, any ways that you feel we could be of help, uh, or if you watch this video in two months and a bunch of it's proven false, make sure to send me a message so I take it down. Um, so any way we can help, please, be sure to reach out and uh, hopefully we'll get on the other side of this thing pretty quick.